guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat and this is Catadactyl. So welcome to my June wrap up part two. I actually read 17 books in the second half of June. Six of them were for Japanese June and I will be talking about today. 11 of them are various romances that I binged because I think it was a reaction to me having such a set TBR. So the 11 romances will be in a separate all the romances I've recently binged video. Um, today we're going to focus on the six books that I read for Japanese June in the second half of the month. So without further ado, let's get right on into it. So the first thing that I read was a short story called Yellow Rose by Yoshio Noboko and I actually DNF'd this one, and I'm not saying that I'll never read it again, I'm just saying I don't want to read it right now. The writer is famous for being kind of the first person to ever write Yuri, which is girls, girls, flower love, and I was really interested to read it because of that reason. However, I realized that I don't really like Yuri that often in anime or manga, because a lot of the time it's very flowery, very dramatic, very like girls giggling and laughing and fawning over their like lover or so on and I realized that when I started this short story that it was essentially that but just in like short story form um, so it's not to my taste um, if you happen to really like that kind of thing then definitely check it out so next up is The Name of the Flower by Kuniko Mukoda. So this is a collection of short stories that deals with different people's lives in Japan. So a lot of the people that we follow are either the men or a woman in a relationship and kind of how they act. Unfortunately, a lot of the stories for me just were not interesting and were boring AF or they had to do with cheating. And uh, cheating is one of my hot button things that I hate. I rarely, rarely read a book with cheating in it. Um, it's a huge turnoff. It goes like cheating, love triangles, the two things that I most hate more than anything else. So this whole collection I gave two and a half stars. Um, they're not for me. I like a lot of other authors way better. Um, if you have a chance, read The Diving Pool by Yoko Ogawa. It will send shivers down your spine. It's amazing. She's amazing. Um, wasn't impressed by these. There was one particular ha story that I liked, which was, I believe, The Dog House. Um, and other than that, I found the others largely unremarkable unfortunately. So then I read Japanese Magnolia by Rei Kimura and in this one we are following a samurai who falls in love with a peasant farmer and I thought it was going to be their story told uh, kind of linearly. It was not. It's actually about a historian in modern times who is a young woman in Tokyo who is brought a series of letters from the ancestors of an ancient samurai and she has to kind of decode them because they're in ancient Chinese or ancient uh, like Japanese calligraphy so she goes through and as she's decoding it's also about her life in modern times as well so there's three problems I had with that kind of storytelling technique one the interspersion of the modern life into the back uh, history of the samurai and the farmer really diluted their section um, so I really didn't like that. Uh, secondly, the main character, who's the woman in Tokyo, I'm pretty sure it's the author talking about herself. Like a lot of things that she says about the pressure of her family and about how um, like foreign lovers just didn't understand her and about how she moved to Singapore to get experience abroad. Um, when I looked up the author, it's all true of the author. So I felt a little bit like the author was just talking to me and it wasn't really a character so much it was like wish fulfillment almost. And the final thing about it was that it was clearly written by someone who speaks English as a second language and whoever the editor was, if there was one, was also an English second language speaker because some of the terms of phrase were conjugated or made in such a way that it did not flow. So. It's not that they, I didn't get the message, it's that it doesn't sound natural. It's not a natural flowing way of speaking. So if I was going to judge it as a work of ESL fiction, it would be amazingly high. Like her English is amazing, but I'm judging it from speaking as a native English speaker. Some of the sections were clunky and it kind of distanced me from it. Um, so overall I gave it three and a half stars. I really wanted to love it. 
I really did like the story between the samurai and the farmer, and I found the depiction of feudal life in Japan at that time fascinating, but for all of those three reasons that I just listed, um, it does get three and a half stars. So if it sounds intriguing to you and you don't think those things would bother you, then I would baby check it out. So then I read Nausicaa Volume 1 by Hayao Miyazaki, and this was fabulous. I gave it four stars. I knew I was going to like it. Um, Nausicaa is one of my favorite female characters of all time. She is the princess of the Valley of the Winds, and she is concerned with two things, keeping her people safe against invading forces, and also figuring out how to solve the poison that is seeping into the land and thus poisoning her own people. So where possible, she tries to de-escalate a situation using nonviolence, and she really believes in living in harmony with the natural world. Um, I just love Nausicaa as a character, so I finished volume one in June, and I asked my husband to pick me up volume two from the school library, so that is on my TBR for July, and I cannot wait. If you're looking for a manga that's older school, like this is from the 80s, but the style is great, the content is great, and there's a lot of action, and there's also a lot to say about humanity and the environment and war, then um, this would be for you. I highly, highly recommend it. So after that, I read The Great Passage by Shiomura. This one was amazing. I give it four and a half stars. So in this one, we follow a man who has worked as a lexicographer his whole life, and he makes dictionaries. So this is a book about the language of words and how we use language to communicate with others and kind of the importance of language and the beauty of language and words and just like overall diction and the language of Japanese and it was beautiful. It was so good. We start out and a man is going to retire and he has been working on a dictionary called The Great Passage for years and he's looking for a prodigy to take over in his stead. And we follow that young man from that time over the course of a few decades and it is just amazing. It is so good. Um, I finished it last night and I was just sobbing. <laughs> like, it was so good. It's really heartfelt. It's a really tender book and it's slow paced. So if you're looking for action, I mean, it's a publisher that publishes dictionary. So if you're looking for action, probably look elsewhere. If you're looking for something about Japanese work culture or the making of dictionaries or the language of Japanese, this is for you. Um, my husband is taking his Japanese test today. Um, so... I'm wishing him luck, and also he is so jealous and he wants to read this book immediately. And the last thing that I read this in the second half of the month was The Little Book of Ikigai by Ken Mogi. And I don't know if you guys can see, but I love the cover of this book. It has waves on the white. Can you see? Isn't that so pretty? This is about Ikigai and it's a Japanese mindset about finding your kind of ideal place in life that allows you to fulfill your happiness, your mission, what the world needs and what will sustain you over your whole life. Um, so he uses a lot of examples from Japanese culture, such as um, really famous sushi chefs or really famous sumo wrestlers or places that have been tended to for a very long time, such as different temples. And also, there are also really cute little illustrations at the end of each chapter. So if you're looking for a beautiful coffee table book that is easy to read and kind of has an introductory lesson on Japanese culture, this would be for you. So that goes ahead and wraps up my June wrap up part two. Like I said, I read 17 books in the second half of the month. So the other half are romances. So look out for that. Um, if you like romances. So without further ado, I hope you are just having the loveliest of days. I also hope that my husband does well on his test. He studied so hard and I hope that it gets less hot because it's so hot. I'm probably melting. Like, oh, I guess it looks kind of dewy, but it's actually just sweat because I'm nasty. So sorry. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day and I will chat to you later. If you like this video, then please give me a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button. That would be awesome. And I will say bye for now. Toodles. Bye.